Australia is home to a great variety of reptiles, as we know. Perhaps the most notable of those reptiles are the two crocodile species. Australia has a freshwater crocodile and a saltwater crocodile. If you're travelling in northern Australia where it's very hot, you might like to take a swim to cool off. Before you do that, you need to check on your local crocodiles. Freshwater crocs feed almost exclusively on fish. Saltwater crocodiles eat whatever they like. That does include human beings, particularly tourists. <laughs> Apart from the crocs, there's about 30 species of freshwater turtles, and there are six large marine turtles that visit our shores and lay their eggs. This usually promotes a bit of discussion about tortoises and turtles as to what is a tortoise and what is a turtle. Tortoises are essentially land-based creatures with big club feet like an elephant. A good example of a land tortoise is the giant Galapagos Island tortoise that everybody knows. Australia does not have any land tortoises, one of the few places without them. What we have are freshwater turtles with a clawed webbed foot. A webbed foot for swimming with a claw on the end of the toe for hauling out. And of course the big marine turtles just have a flipper. They don't have a fully formed foot. So there's some pretty distinct differences there. Over and above the crocs and the turtles, there are a lot of snakes and lizards in Australia. The lizards of Australia belong to five quite distinct families. A couple of those families you're not likely to come into contact with. If you do live where it's warm at night constantly, you will see geckos running around the walls catching moths and things. These are small, soft-bodied, insect-eating lizards that are, for the most part, nocturnal. A lot of geckos in Australia, but you're not likely to see them. Nor are you likely to see the legless lizards. The long, thin lizards that look like snakes. They're harmless creatures. There's a lot of those, but you're not likely to see them. The dragon lizards are a bit more prominent on the landscape. This is a bitter dragon that Veronica will bring along for you to have a closer look at. A lot of people confuse the bearded dragon with the frilled lizard. The frilled lizard is a much bigger lizard. It puts up a big frill when it's frightened. It's well known around the world. It's one on display in the reptile house. Bearded dragons, of which there are about six different kinds, occur mostly in southern Australia. And they put out a little beard under their chin when they're frightened. They're quite prickly to touch. You will see bearded dragons in outback Australia where it's hot and dry. Generally perched on fence posts and railings and fallen timber. Where they sit soaking up the sun and eating all those yummy insects. The reason they sit soaking up the sun is that they are reptiles. Reptiles are cold-blooded creatures. Which is not to say that their blood is actually cold, but it's more a term to describe the fact that the body temperature of reptiles is generally about the same temperature as the surrounding environment. And that, of course, is very different to being warm-blooded like ourselves. On a cold winter's night, we can pull a blanket up over ourselves and trap all that body heat we're generating, and we will warm up. If you put a blanket on a lizard on a cold night, it will appreciate the thought but you're not doing anything about warming it up. There's no heat there. Reptiles are ectothermic. They have to go out and seek heat from an external source. Naturally enough, that's the sun. So bearded dragons lay about 20 soft-shelled eggs that the female deposits in a hole in the soil. About 60 days later, the young bearded dragons hatch out. And we're very lucky today. Yeah. Take the lid off. Well, they might a little bit, but... Very lucky today to have some young bearded dragons that have hatched out. We'll probably try not to touch them, they're a bit young. Baby dragons. This is the mother over here. She's laid three clutches of eggs, and out of that we've had 31 bearded dragons hatch out. What do you do with them? Uh, a lot of them go to other zoos and places. They all are in demand. This is the central bearded dragon. Quite well in captivity. Of course, lizards that small that are born or hatched are very vulnerable to being eaten by other animals, birds and things. So very few make it through to adulthood. Look, the other one.
Shingleback has the great honour of being the first native Australian reptile seen by European people. As long ago as 1699, William Dampier was on the west coast of Australia and he makes a note about shinglebacks. And another large and familiar skin to Australians is the good old fashioned blue tongue visit. Where are you all going? Thank you. Stubby little fingers. Okay, I'm gonna rest. No reptile lady for my birthday. And I poke that tongue in there. You're gonna bite it for me. And it's all comfort. You know when she may be not very nice, but everybody else will know. From there, it gets relayed to the brain for analysis. Effectively, snakes and lizards can smell the air with their tongue. It's more effective than through the nostrils. If you're lucky enough to have a blue tongue lizard visit you in your garden, it will do a great job of cleaning up all those unwanted snails. Some people believe that blue tongue lizards keep snakes away. That's not true. Some snakes eat blue tongues. No, but they will keep snails away. Blue tongue lizards give birth to live young as well. In the eastern or common blue tongue like this. Twenty or so babies. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Tiny little fingers. Ready to go. They're like they're All right. The last kinds of lizards that occur in Australia do encompass some of the largest Monitors. lizards in the world. The largest yes. lizard in the world is the Komodo dragon of Indonesia. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a massive lizard. It gets up over three meters. Big, powerful legs and claws. Big, strong tail, long, forked tongue. Occurs on Komodo Island, the other island. The Komodo dragon is not a dragon of any kind. The Komodo dragon is a monitor lizard, like this Australian lace monitor. You're over there. That Veronica will bring around. Monitor lizards occur throughout Australia. That's the idea. Oh, it's curling its tail around her head. Mm -hmm. Is an iguana a monitor? Monitor lizards occur throughout Australia, oh, up into New Guinea, across through Asia and into Africa. It's only in Australia that we call monitor lizards goannas. The word goanna is uniquely Australian. It's a corruption of the word iguana. When the early settlers came to Australia, they saw these big lizards in the trees and assumed that they were iguanas, like the iguanas of South America. Australians are very lazy speakers. They said, look at the iguanas, look at the goanas. That's where that word comes from. So lace monitors or common tree goanas are carnivorous lizards and they're ferocious predators. They'll eat anything they can overpower which includes possums and rabbits and rats and mice, oh, birds beautiful. and eggs, snakes and other wow. invertebrates. Yeah, they also have the unfortunate oh, habit of venturing onto the road to feed on road-killed animals. And in the process of that, Sorry, I can't make it they so. no, you're, you're good. by cars. Oh. 
Thank you. 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 Australia is well known as a bit of a land of snakes. Our large, dangerous land snakes are well known throughout the world. Most Australians live in the suburbs. Most Australians don't go into the bush. Most Australians like to brag about how dangerous our snakes are. And they will tell you we have the top ten most deadly snakes in the world. This is the order in which they will kill you. You shouldn't worry about that. There are no degrees of deadness. <laughs> Apart from those well-known land snakes, there are dangerous sea snakes across the northern coastline. You shouldn't touch sea snakes. But we also have blind or worm snakes that live in the soil that feed on termites. They are harmless creatures. Their habits are poorly understood. They come about the rainstorms and things. We have a few freshwater snakes. We have some tree snakes, around about 20 different kinds of pythons. Pythons are the largest living snakes. They're also quite small. This is a spotted python. Yeah, I can bring along. Yeah, I can pet that. Our boys are doing a great job. This is a full grown or, or an adult spotted python. Obviously harmless, or we wouldn't bring it over and kill you. I'll get the sack. <laughs> so snakes are quite dry to touch, they're not slimy like frogs, they are very clean creatures, you won't catch fleas on a snake, they are very quiet creatures. Because pythons are non-venomous they have developed another method for obtaining a meal without the use of venom through the process of constriction. So don't squeeze him too hard, he might squeeze you back. <laughs> Python sees a food animal by the nose, throw a few quick coils around it and squeeze very tightly, enough to suffocate the food animal. They swallow that food animal whole. Snakes do not chew their food. Snakes are well known for being able to eat food items much bigger than their own head. The reason they can do that is their jawbone's not connected at the front there like ours. Those two bones come apart on a ligament. The whole thing moves out from the skull, creating a very wide mouth. All pythons lay eggs. All pythons are non-venomous. Okay. The last kinds of snakes that occur in Australia are venomous snakes. And Australia is unique in having more venomous species than non-venomous. <coughs> That's not to say that all the venomous snakes that inhabit Australia are capable of killing people. You left the leaves now. It's not to say that all the venomous snakes that occur in Australia are capable of killing people, but some can. If we look up on the wall here, you'll see the small scale snake or inland taipan. That is the most venomous land snake in the world. There's a couple on display in the reptile house. The inland taipan occurs mostly out in southwestern Queensland where it's very remote. No one's ever died from the bite of an inland taipan. A couple of snake collectors have been bitten, but the people who live and work out on the land in southwestern Queensland don't go around touching snakes. So that's just been very lucky. No one's died. The coastal taipan has been responsible for a number of deaths in Australia up until the production of taipan antivenom in 1955. Everybody bitten by a taipan died. If you are bitten by a taipan, you will need to receive taipan antivenom or you will die. People have been bitten by other kinds of snakes and not received anti-venom and managed to live through that experience, but there are no taipan stories like that. Taipans are very dangerous snakes. Death adders, brown snakes, tiger snakes, copperheads and the black snake group. All those well-known snakes are capable of delivering a life-threatening bite to human beings. The eastern tiger snake and the copperhead occur within the sanctuary. They're quite common, you may see one today. We see a lot of snakes here over summer. In the 75 years or so that thousands of visitors have been to Hillsdale Sanctuary, no one's ever been bitten by a snake. So it does support the idea that snakes are shy, retiring creatures, and really, for the most part, that's true. This is a well-known, dangerous Australian snake, the red-bellied black snake. As the name implies, black snakes are generally a glossy black above and a shiny red underneath. The one thing about black snakes is you just about always find them around water, along creeks and rivers and lagoons and things, swamps, where they feed on frogs and fish and eels, rats and mice. 
They give birth to about a dozen live young in the autumn about this time of year, which is not that high a number of young as tiger snakes produce 30 plus or so. Not too close, my son. <laughs> black snakes are a fairly shy snake. You would be unlucky to be bitten by a black snake. Most people are bitten by dangerous snakes in Australia when they try to kill them. You might want to consider that. If you are bitten by a dangerous Australian snake, your chances of dying these days have been greatly reduced as we do have the best anti-venoms in the world here in Australia. The statistics for death from snake bite in Australia is one to two persons per year, which is absolutely fantastic, unless you're one of those two people. <laughs> on that note, I'd say thanks for your attention. It's time to head on to the bird show, which is out there around to your left. Good weather for flying birds, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.